We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism Amen. because we Amen. believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people, the right time Amen. period. Amen. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to come up with a conundrum of doctrine and confusion. Mm -hmm. So dispensationalism clears up everything. Amen. So one of the things to, uh, that dispensationalists believe in is that hell has different compartments. When you believe that hell has different compartments, everything is going to click and make sense. You got to realize this, is that not everyone is going to the same place in hell. They're all going to hell, but they're not going to the same place, the same compartment in hell. That's why some people are going to criticize. So you're saying a great woman like Mother Teresa, who's done so many good works, totally selfless, she's going to the same hell as Adolf Hitler. That does not make sense. They're absolutely right. That does not make sense. It's totally incomprehensible. But if you teach that Adolf Hitler is burning at a lower part, a very different part of hell, compared to where Teresa is, then it makes sense. And you wouldn't get all judgmental about me saying Teresa is in hell if you know that good works are not required for salvation, but rather faith in Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that she's an evil woman and I just bash her in the head. No, you got to understand this. Good people go to hell too. And if you don't think that, you're very gullible. You're very gullible. All right. Hell has different compartments. I'm going to give you several cases right here. First is Luke chapter 16. There's undoubtedly different places in hell. We're going to look at the book of Luke chapter 16. There's a place of comfort. And there's a place of torment, you must understand. Notice the rich man is in a place of torment. Lazarus is in a place of comfort. Look at verse 22. And it came to pass that when the beggar died and was carried by the angels into where? Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so the rich man is at a different place. Lazarus is into Abraham's bosom. Now, uh, the thing is, is that some people might say, well, that's not a location or a place that's Abraham's side, but it says into Abraham's bosom. I'm sure I must have had quite a trip going inside Abraham's stomach then. So that doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's look at verse 23. And in hell, see, hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now look at this. So this rich man, he's in torments in hell, but then he seeth afar off. He sees, what, Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. So there's a place of torment, and then there's a place of comfort. You might say, well, he's in heaven. No, that's not the case. How come he can see him? How come he can communicate across? Because keep reading right here. We're going to look at verse 25. Uh, 24 and 25, see that? Lazarus, I mean not Lazarus, the rich man and Abraham are communicating. See that? They're talking to each other. But look at verse 26, that's even more plain. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a what? Great gulf fixed. See, they're in the same location, but in different compartments. See that? Amen. So this is the gulf. Amen. This is the gulf right here. So we already have a place, hell, torment, where lost people go and burn. Then you have a place of comfort. This is Abraham's bosom. But it has a different name as well. It's also called paradise. Why? Because Jesus, he told the thief on the cross, today, that very same day, you will be with me in paradise. But Jesus, did he go to heaven after he died, or did he go to the lower parts of the earth? The Bible says he went to the lower parts of the earth first, then up to heaven. So that proves that the paradise was down there that time. So it's also called paradise. It's also called in Hebrew, Sheol, Sheol, the realm of the dead, the realm of the dead. Now, this is uh, something very interesting right here. The Bible, in our King James Bible, in Luke chapter 16, verses 23 through 26, this is proof that hell has different places, okay? We saw three so far. The gulf, this one, and this one. What else is located in hell, you'd be very surprised. In Hebrew, it's called Sheol. In fact, if you read throughout the Bible, 
throughout the Old Testament and throughout the Bible, this Hebrew word Sheol is quite often used for Old Testament saints. When Old Testament saints say that they're going to go uh, toward where hell is located, what did David say? David said, even if you leave my soul in hell, see, does that mean David's burning in hell, frying as a lost sinner? No, because there's a realm of the dead, you got to understand. There's a realm of the dead. So hell, the King James Bible in English calls all of this hell because it is accurately called hell. But however, it has specific different locations. So in the King James English, what you're going to find out is hell this, hell that, but it describes each particular place of hell differently, differently. So what, we, so what I'm going to do is give you the specific words so that uh, we can make this more simplified, okay? All of this is hell, but I'm going to use specific words to simplify it. We see here hell, place of torment, the gulf, and then Abraham's bosom, a.k.a. paradise, a.k.a. Sheol, a.k.a. whatever you want to call it. There's like three different names for that one. But look at Matthew chapter 23 as well, Matthew chapter 23. There is no doubt that there are different, different places in hell. Matthew chapter 23. And notice what the Bible says at verse 14. Verse 14. Matthew chapter 23, verse 14. Oh, Jesus. Why, why can't you preach like Jesus did on love, love, love? They, they don't read. They sure don't read, all right? This verse shows that hell has different compartments. Luke chapter 20. 16 showed hell has different compartments. Matthew 23, 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye, the Pharisees, shall receive the what? Greater, Greater damnation. damnation. So there are different levels of burning in hell. Now look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. If you still don't believe hell has different locations, then uh, I'm very sorry you haven't been reading your Bible much. The Bible definitely shows there are def different locations in hell. And if you really don't believe that, then Acts 1 should convince you. Look at Acts chapter 1. Where did Judas Iscariot go? You think that he went to the same place that everybody did? Or does he have his own little compartment, apartment room somewhere in hell? <laughs> Look at Acts chapter 1. Look at the verse 20. Uh, Look at verse... 18. Now this man, speaking of Judas Iscariot, uh, purchased a field with the reward of his reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And then look at verse 21. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and amount, uh, excuse me, uh, wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, and as you keep reading down, you're going to notice right here in verse 22 and 23, and that uh, they all describe about uh, the apostleship. But that's not the important part. The important part is verse 25. So this apostle who's going to take over Judas Iscariot's place, read, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he, Judas, might go to where? His own place. Look at that. So notice in Acts chapter 1 and verse 25, Judas Iscariot, after he died, he went to his own place. So we'll put right here Judas Iscariot's and probably his apartment room number is 666. Hey. <laughs> That's not Bible, okay? I'm just making things up, all right? That's not Bible, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so like Krishna, there you go. 666. So we see right here, definitely, these are all proofs that hell has different compartments. Now, here's something else that's interesting. So we see here Sheol. Now, the Bible also calls this place Hades. Hades. So in Hades, what you're going to notice right here, so this has four different names now. So sometimes Hades would refer to this one. It would refer to this one. It can even refer to the grave, you've got to understand. Now, this is very interesting, is that why the Bible would mention so many times about Sheol and Hades as the grave, but then it'll also mention about a fiery place of torment or a place of comfort. Because all of this is related, you understand. The grave is just the rooftop of hell, you understand. 
And in, so hell has so many different compartments. That's why Sheol and Hades combines all of these words together. But there's undoubtedly a difference. In the grave, the body turns to dust. But if you go to uh, uh, hell and Abraham's bosom, they're alive and conscious. But they're all, they all use the same Greek and Hebrew word. Just like the King James Bible, we use hell. So there are different places. So all of this, this is famously called the underworld, all of this. So all of this can be famously known as the underworld. So all of this realm is the underworld. And you'll see that hell has many different compartments, and this is how the realm of the dead operate. But not only that, if you look at Revelation chapter 20, uh, we won't turn there for time's sake, but if you look at Revelation chapter 20, where does Satan go? To the bottomless pit. So there's another one where Satan goes to for a thousand years. So the bottomless pit. Not only that, look at 2 Peter. So your hand is over there. Might as well read it. We're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 2. Now notice what the Bible says right here in 2 Peter chapter 2. And we will read verse 4. Uh, verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose ju judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Oh, wait, context is damnation, hell fire. But look at verse 4, For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to where? Hell. And deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So the angels even went to hell, and they went to their own reserved spot. So we see right here, 2 Peter chapter 2, and I read verse 4. Verse 4. That place, if you read the Greek translation, the Greek translation mentions Hades all over, but in this particular passage, it calls it Tartarus. Tartarus. This is where the angels go. They go to a section called Tartarus. But you see how the King James Bible, Greek and Hebrew, all complement each other right here? All of this is hell, and it has spe uh, different specific locations. When you use Greek and Hebrew to correct the King James Bible and you lose final authority, that's when you should call it bunk and ignore Greek and Hebrew. But when you use any evidence, Greek or Hebrew, math, history, science, whatever, to support the Bible, you'd be surprised how amazing God's Bible is supported by evidences. See? So we see right here that the angels are in a location called Tartarus. So who knows? Maybe somewhere over here. Larkin does a better job in drawing pictures and charts than I do. So we see the angels right here. Angels don't have wings, but I'll just do wings right here so that you can get where they are at. So they are in Tartarus. Tartarus. So there are many different locations in hell. There are different levels. So that's one level, second, third, fourth, like this perhaps, hell. So there are different levels in hell. Judas Iscariot has his own apartment room somewhere, probably number 666. And then Satan has the bottomless pit. There's a gulf. Paradise used to be here, but now it went up. So I just want to mention this. This is no longer here. It goes up. How do you know that, Pastor? Because if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said paradise is up there, third heaven. So it moved. So paradise moved. But if you watch my other teaching, I gave you another teaching. It's called Paradise in Hell. Paradise in Hell. In that teaching, I also showed you that it's gonna, you're going to see the compartment open up again during the tribulation. It's going to open up again in the tribulation. It's very interesting, but I'm not going to go into that. There is one more place of hell that I forgot to mention, and it's not going to be below here. The grave, actually what's going to happen is it's going to be located in Jerusalem, the outskirts of Jerusalem. There's where the Jehovah Witnesses get confused with Gehenna. So the Bible, you'll notice that in Greek, the Bible will refer to this as Gehenna, Gehenna. And where is Gehenna? Gehenna will be on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And hell is going to be right there on earth. Talk about literal hell on earth. So when people make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, 
to see Jesus Christ, they're going to see people burning, and that's going to put the fear of God on them. Well, I don't believe in that, Pastor. Well, uh, Isaiah 66, we'll just do one more verse, huh? Just to convince you, then we'll call it a day. Look at Isaiah 66, just to convince you. Well, that's crazy. Gene Kim doesn't know what he's talking about. He's been crazy like in the rest of his videos. Well, you know, I have verses for those things, but I could just close it here. But, you know, I guess you'll need a verse. Go to Isaiah 66. We're going to look at verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Okay, look at that. They're all going to worship God. So they're going to make a pilgrimage to God. But when they make that pilgrimage to God, look at this, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the what? Carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be what? Quenched. That's hell fire. Mark 9, what did Jesus say? Their worm shall not die, and the fire is not quenched. That is hell fire at Mark 9. And you know what the Greek word for that was? Gehenna. That's why we know Gehenna is going to be the location where people are going to come to worship God, but on the outskirts they're going to see people burning at Gehenna, and that's going to put the fear of God on them. And Gehenna will start at the millennium. It's going to start at the millennium. Because if you read Isaiah 66, we won't keep reading for time's sake, but look at the context. It's when God rules on the earth with his kingdom. When does God ever set up his kingdom on earth and rule? No other dispensation except millennium. 